Hey, how's it going YouTube? I'm Landon, and I have just come back from my honeymoon of two weeks. And I know a lot of you guys are probably like, Oh my god, Landon, I didn't even know you were away! Well, that's because I pre-recorded videos for all of you guys, but I actually got married, and I went to Italy on my honeymoon for two weeks, but now I'm back. It was a great time, and also a lot of crazy stories. I had this one part of the story where I went into a restaurant, I sat down, and the waitress was just, he was racist, and he told me to get out of his restaurant, go back to my country. He told me off, he was cussing me off, giving me the middle finger. I recorded the whole thing right over here, if you guys wanna watch it on my vlog channel, give it a click, watch that video, and you guys can watch the honeymoon as well. It was crazy, a lot of awesome drone footage as well. Okay, so enough of all that, let's get right into what you guys clicked for. This is a top 10 video. Flying can be an enjoyable experience or it could be a terrible one. It is no secret that airplanes are filthy, loud, and expensive, but we need to fly in order to get to certain places, right? So let's take a look at the top 10 things you should never do on a plane, part two. Taking off in at number 10 with don't eat stinky, smelly food. Please don't show up to your flight with your bag packed with a tuna sandwich or a plate of onion rings. Not only those things while you eat them, but you're also setting up yourself for bad breath for the rest of the flight. And the person next to you may not talk to you. Moving into number nine, don't join the mile high club. Flight attendants know what you're trying to do even if you think you're being extremely subtle. And if you choose to do something at your seats and you get caught, you could be charged with public indecency and there have been cases of people taken off the plane by police. So just hold off until you make it off the plane and you're in the privacy of your own hotel room. So what is the mile high club? Well, it's when you have, you know, an intimate time up there. You get naked and yeah, some people do it. Do not attempt to smoke while on the plane, and this comes in to number eight. Smoking has been banned on flights for a very long time, and if you're caught smoking, it is considered a federal offense, which is punishable by fines up to $5,000. So this even means e-cigarettes and vapors are also banned from flights. So don't take that chance in the bathroom trying to like light one up, because they can sense it. There's detectors in there. Cruising our way into number seven with don't fall asleep when it's daytime in your final destination. Sleeping when it's daytime at your final destination nation will make it harder for you to adjust to its time zone. I know with us flying to Italy, it's a six hour time difference into the future, I call it, and it was so hard to adjust. If you choose to sleep, be prepared to face an even worse jet lag. Experts advise you to change your watch to reflect the time zone of where you're traveling to and adjust your activities accordingly. And another good hint, if you're traveling, you should try to sleep on wherever time zone you're gonna be at, like a day or two prior, because you're already in the time zone, and when you get there, you're good to go. And now in number six, don't kick or nudge the seat in front of you. This is obvious, but it happens so often and it's so annoying. This is a basic common courtesy. I think we've all had our seats kicked before and it's not fun. Especially when you're trying to sleep or eat and or if you're having your meal. Could you imagine having wine and then bam and then red wines everywhere? And for parents, don't let your kids kick the seats either. It's just so annoying. I know on my flight, that's exactly what happened. There was like this six-year-old person behind me and they just kept kicking the seat and then all I did was I I turn around and I just like, I try to make eye contact with the mother to be like, I know that she's kicking my seat and it's so annoying, please tell them to stop. When you know you need to use the toilet regularly, this is really annoying. Do you need to use the toilet every hour or so? Well then, don't reserve a window seat. I mean, it just makes sense, right? You have to climb over the middle person and the end person. The end person is always the one that sleeps. If you have a weaker bladder or you simply like to get up and stretch more frequently, it would make more sense for you to just give up the window seat and just sit in the aisle. Don't be that person that wakes up the or two people every single hour. It's rude and it's inconsiderate. Don't let your kids do whatever they want, and this comes into number four. If you're traveling with children, you have the responsibility to educate your kids about what is acceptable behavior and what is not while you're on a plane. You shouldn't let them scream, have tantrums, throw things, kick the seat like we just talked about, or do any of these things that can annoy other passengers. If you can't control your kids at home, then maybe you shouldn't be traveling with them. Because I've had kids on the plane, I've seen them like throwing stuff, and it's like, what's happening? Do not skip a required medication or take new medication on your trip, and this comes into number three, you should continue to take your regular medications while on board the plane, unless otherwise advised by your doctor not to. And also, you should never take a new medication while on an airplane because the stress of flying and high altitudes can have a very different effect on your body. Also, you never know how your body will react to a new medication, and hey, you're stuck on this plane now. What if it's like a 10-hour flight? You can't really do anything. What if you need the emergency room? Because again, I do travel a lot, and I do come across a lot of these situations 
situations. And we actually had this one guy who just passed out on the plane because he took new medication, but luckily there was a few doctors there to help him out. And now making our way into number two spot, don't joke about bombs or weapons. Maybe this should be at the number one spot. No one's gonna laugh or joke about guns, weapons, or anything that could be seen as life-threatening, especially the flight attendants who have the ability and authority to remove you from the flight. Even if you think that there's the slightest chance that you pose a security risk, they will remove you. So don't be going on there and be like, hey guys, there's a bomb on the plane. Because how many people are you gonna freak out? Finally, at the number one spot, don't tune out the safety briefing. Guys, this is really important because what if something happens? You're not gonna know what to do. I think we can all agree that the briefing is boring, especially if you heard it a million times, but as tedious as it seems, this information could save your life. At the very least, take a minute to figure out where the nearest emergency exit is and how many rows you're away from the emergency exit. It doesn't take long for something to happen, so you have to be prepared. Also, there's a little bit slight differences in the emergency safety speech that they have to give you guys. What if there's like one less emergency exit and you're like, oh, I know where they all are, but it's a different type of plane. So you never know, so it's just best to listen to the different ones. Well, there you guys have it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys all in the next video.